All right, on to logical fallacy number three, the appeal to ignorance and burden of proof. Appeal to ignorance is saying that something must be true because, well, nobody's proven it false yet. And we'll talk about why that's not a valid proof for something. Uh, and then second, the idea of burden of proof is important, and that's uh, something that gets lost a lot, and especially um, religious arguments. The person making the claim is responsible for proving that claim. Uh, the person refuting the claim does not have the burden to prove it incorrect. Uh, and we'll talk about this example, Bertrand Russell's China teapot. So imagine, uh, well, this is what he did. Bertrand Russell is a philosopher and he just did a thought experiment where he said, you know, imagine that there is a teapot, a China teapot and it's floating out in space. And I think he said it was between the orbits of Mars and Earth. It's locked in orbit out there. Now I'm gonna tell you before you go and try to look for it that no telescope is strong enough, has enough uh, detail to be able to, to see it. Do you believe it's there? And of course the answer is, well, no. I mean, why would you believe it's there? And he follows up by saying, well, can you prove it's not there? Well, no, I can't prove it's not there. Well, then it's there. Um, and I think most of us would agree that this is a little bit ridiculous. Uh, you could do that with anything. I mean, you don't have to say a teapot. You could say, you know, there's a dog, or there's a, a set of nail clippers, or a, there's a 1975 Oldsmobile floating in space. And you could say it's anywhere. You could say it's, you know, outside Jupiter, at the orbit of Jupiter, it's under the sea, in the deepest part of the ocean. Uh, but what makes you make that claim in the first place? If you're going to make the claim, it's your responsibility to prove it. You have the burden. The proof falls on your shoulders. And just because somebody can't disprove it, just because somebody can't say that it's not there doesn't mean that it's true. And this is kind of counterintuitive because mathematically we think in our heads a double negative is equal to a positive, right? If you can't pr prove that it's not there, then it must be there. But that doesn't work in logic. They aren't equal. Let's talk about some examples. Mo Obama wasn't even born in America. I think that this guy named Obama was not born here. Somebody else says, well, I think he was. The first person says, well, I don't think he was born here. You know what? Show me evidence that he was born here. Otherwise, I'm going to stick with what I believe. He was born elsewhere. The problem here is this person made the initial claim. What was behind that claim? There had to be a reason to think that that was the case. And so that needs to be produced. What is the evidence that this person has to back that claim up? But instead, person one has shifted the proof. He's given this proof to person two and said, you know what? It's actually up to you to prove that he was born in America. But that's illogical. If you are the person who made the claim, it's your responsibility to show evidence for it. And just because someone else can't show evidence against it doesn't mean that you're suddenly right. That's basically what this says. I think you cheated on me. Prove that you didn't. This is the Othello problem. If you make the claim that somebody cheated on you, you've got to come up with some evidence for a couple reasons. Number one, how does somebody prove they didn't cheat? I mean, think about it. You could prove that you cheated, but how do you prove fidelity? You have a problem there. But second, if you're the one making the claim, you're the one responsible for proving it. 
it's not up to me, it's not up to whoever's being accused to prove that he or she didn't. Okay. Number three, God exists. And by the way, there are lots of proofs for the existence of God uh, out there. And you can look at them and think what you want. The ontological argument, for example, is, is one that's popular. Um, but this is one that I hear that's just not logical. So if you're going to argue for the existence of God, you might as well have a really, really good argument and know which one's not to use. And this is one not to use because it's illogical. Person one, I think God exists. Well, prove it. Well, I can't prove that God exists, but can you prove that God doesn't exist? Well, no. Well, then God exists. Just because somebody can't disprove God doesn't de facto make God exist. And to illustrate this point, we could replace God with invisible person. I think that there's an invisible person in the corner of this room. Well, prove it. Well, can you prove that there's not an invisible person in the corner of this room? Well, no, he's invisible. I can't see him. I can't touch him. There's no way for me to prove that. Well, then there is an invisible person in the corner of this room. Just because we're ignorant of the fact, because we can't see it, because we can't sense it, doesn't mean that it exists. And we can't shift that burden of proof. If you're going to claim that God exists, and you want to try to go about proving it, then it's your responsibility to prove it. You can't pass that burden to somebody else and say that they can't disprove it. Okay. Um, that's it for logical fallacy number three. We'll, we'll do hasty generalization next.